Hey, how's it going, pop-up camper family? Welcome back to It's Poppin'. So in this video, I wanna teach you how to winterize your pop-up camper's water system. Now, there might be some of you out there who are like, hey, don't you guys already have a video on that topic? And you are absolutely right. However, there are a few key distinctions and differences that we're gonna do in this video. First and foremost, we are gonna be winterizing our uh, Jayco, which has a slightly different, I don't know, setup, I guess, if you will, for the water system. The difference between the StarCraft and the Jayco here is that the Jayco actually has a dedicated siphon tube um, that you can actually pop right into like your jug or gallon of RV antifreeze. That way you don't have to put water into your water holding tank, into that fresh water holding tank. The second difference for this video is that we're gonna be showing you guys how to exclusively winterize your pop-up camper just with this RV antifreeze. So that way, <laughs> just in case you don't have one of these big air compressors, you don't have to worry, you can still do it. Of course, with these air compressors, you can use the blow-up method, blow the majority of the water out of the lines, and that way you don't have to use as much antifreeze. But then again, these are kind of expensive and you might not have one laying around. So if you don't have one, this video is definitely for you. However, I encourage you also to check out the uh, our other video in which we did utilize air compressor to winterize our pop-up camper, just in case that's for you. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right guys, so first things first, we need to drain out our pop-up camper's water system. Now, if you want a little bit more in-depth information about the water system in your pop-up camper, we have a whole video just dedicated to that. So if you're a little rusty on the subject, highly encourage you to check that out. But regardless, we're gonna be hitting on some of the same points uh, right now as we do in that video. So in essence, there are three areas or three points uh, of drainage that we have in our Jayco here. First one is gonna be that fresh water holding tank underneath the pop-up camper. Second one is gonna be our, our water heater, not hot water heater, right guys? <laughs> our water heater, um, that's gonna have a drain point as well. And then finally, we have two low point drains. And um, those are gonna be one each for both, of course, the hot water line as well as the cold water line. So once we drain out all three of those points, we'll be good to go to proceed with our uh, winterization. Oh. So first we're gonna open up our freshwater holding tank, which is uh, kind of unconveniently located uh, in right by the axle underneath the pop-up. So we're gonna go to that valve, turn it, I think either a quarter or a half turn, and that'll uh, drain it out. I don't think there's too much water in there because we generally drain that out after we're done camping, but uh, we'll see if there's anything in there. All right, so as I expected, no water in our freshwater holding tank. Next up, let's tackle the uh, water heater. And of note, make sure you open up that temperature pressure relief valve prior to taking out the uh, drain valve. Uh, that way any water or anything that's, well, should be water, right? <laughs> that way that water doesn't come spurting out the um, drain valve. So there's a temperature pressure relief valve. I don't think, there might not be any water in here as well. Now, located right under here is gonna be the drain valve. And let's see if I can remember off the top of my head how big this is. Nope, a little bit bigger. Keep going. Hopefully we have one large enough. There we go. Okay, so at least on our water heater, it's gonna be a 5 16 inch uh, socket. So I'm gonna grab that, plus an extension. And this is just a breaker bar because it's nice and long. And we'll rotate that off. Now if any of you guys have any like tips or tricks on how to catch water out of here, if it comes out better than I have devised with this little container, let me know. We'll see if any water is in here. Nope, essentially none. Okay guys, so for our low point valves, at least in our Jayco here, we have to step inside of our pop-up camper. 
and those are located in one of the cabinets. Right in here are our low point valves. One is located right there and the other way in the back there. And all you have to do for these guys is pull up on them maybe a quarter of an inch and they release any water in the lines. Next up, let's ensure that there's no water sitting or resting in either of our drains. And by that I mean either our sink or our shower drain, you know, where you usually attach your gray water tank, if you have one, of course. So I'm just gonna open those up, make sure there's no water sitting in them, and then we can go from there. All right, first off, on the slide out side, we have our shower drain. Nothing in there, so that's good. We can check that off the list. Next up, we have our sink drain located at the rear of our pop-up. I know there's no water in there because it's wide open, so nothing coming out of there, but definitely check it if you got it. Next up, while you're outside your pop-up camper, take your water catchment container and place it under that low point valve if you have one, of course. I'm gonna put it under the cold side because that's why I think the water is gonna come out and you'll see why in just in a second. So with your water catchment device under your low point, you're gonna turn on your water pump. And I think I could hear some coming out. Let's double check to make sure. All right, let's close our low point valves back up. And if you haven't already, make sure you close off your freshwater holding tank valve underneath the pop-up. Now, moving forward, there's a few uh, valves that you also need to close off. First and foremost, if you have one, close off your water heater um, in the sense that you don't want, once we start pumping RV antifreeze, you don't want water flowing into your water heater. So there's gonna be a valve to close that off. You're gonna open a bypass and then you're gonna close another valve off. I'll show you that all coming up. In addition to the water heater, you need to, as you'll see going forward, close off uh, a valve in between that siphon tube as well as a fresh water tank. So that way it prevents um, RV antifreeze once again from going into your fresh water holding tank. Okay, so here is our water heater. At the bottom, that allows the water to flow in. In the middle right there is gonna be the bypass. And at the top, that of course allows the water to flow out. So what we need to do in order to bypass our water heater, of course, is to open up the bypass and close the water going into, and if I can reach it, out of our water heater. Now the second valve is located under our oven. And that's gonna be this valve right here that goes down into the fresh water holding tank. So I'm gonna close that off. And then here is that siphon tube I was talking about. We're going to open that up. Now before we go any further, and I'll just bring this up in case you have one, but if you do have an inline water filter, probably under your sink uh, on the cold side, if you do have a water filter inside your pop-up camper, make sure you take that off and of course bypass that as well. All right, so here comes the fun part. We are gonna take our RV antifreeze, the pink stuff of course, take our siphon tube here, throw it in here, and then subsequently, we are going to turn on our water pump. So now that we've introduced some of that RV antifreeze into the water system, I'm going to turn on each of our faucets uh, one at a time. So we'll of course have both the hot and cold water sides, and then we have the sink, our shower, and then our exterior shower. Of course, your mileage may vary on what you all have in your pop-up. So I'm just gonna do one at a time, that way I can make sure we have our water catch pan or our antifreeze catch pan. <laughs> Uh, on the appropriate uh, drainage area. So like I said, one at a time and we'll keep pumping that RV antifreeze through until we see it come out the other end. So this is just water coming out of course and some air. <laughs> so we'll just 
keep this open until uh, the pink antifreeze starts coming out. Right there. Now let's do the cold water side. Pumps on. And you'll probably see antifreeze go down, yep. And definitely pink antifreeze coming out. So the double benefit of doing it this way is that by pushing antifreeze through our drain valves, especially in our sink and our shower, we're also putting uh, antifreeze into those P traps and which of course is just by the nature of how it works, pushes out any water that might be in those P traps. Not to say that those might, you know, freeze if there's water in them, but in my opinion, better to be safe than sorry. Next up, we got the shower of course, but as I go along, what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna take an old rag and wipe out the sink and such. <sighs> this stuff says it's non-staining, but uh, once again, better to be safe than sorry, and I'm just gonna make sure this antifreeze doesn't, uh, you know, leave any pink residue in our sink or our showers or anything like that. things up by doing the exterior shower here. Obviously conveniently we can use the same catch basin as we did uh, for the shower here. So we'll just turn on these one at a time until we see pink coming out. in there. That way we don't get any uh, pink antifreeze in our shower holder there. And of course once you're all done running antifreeze through your sink, your showers, etc. Go ahead and turn that water pump back off. That way it's not running any more than it needs to. Um, I like to turn uh, off that uh, valve that uh, the siphon is attached to. I uh, probably don't have to, that's just me. And then I, of course, go around once again with your uh, rag or towel, wipe up any f more antifreeze that may have splashed anywhere, but that's just me. So as far as the antifreeze versus the blowout method, you know, I kind of like just the simplicity of this. With the blowout method, of course, you gotta get out the air compressor. You do, of course, have to use some antifreeze for your water pump and Maybe if your P-traps, uh, if you have some P-traps and you want to throw some antifreeze in those. Whereas this is just um, a gallon of water freeze, <laughs> water freeze, of antifreeze. That's all you need and pump it through everything and it's pretty simple. So I think I might like this method a little bit better. But uh, of course, let me know what you guys do um, once uh, it starts getting colder out and you, know, you start nearing those freezing temps. Uh, let me know what you guys do in the comments below. Um, and as always guys, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. If not, hopefully we'll see you out there camping.